I think that what I'm seeing is what is actually being taped, so that works. Okay, cool. So, so what I'm I gonna see right now is your like I just see I'm seeing your page, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm gonna so, open my test site. Yeah, so uh, if you go to a test site, great. Yeah, which um, which child thing uh, do you use? Agency Pro. Is that what you use too? That uh, well, I use Beautiful Pro and I use Agent. I I use a few different sites, or I I mean if I I have a diff a few different sites and I use a few different uh, templates. But I'd like to know Agency Pro. How to do okay. this on Agency Pro? Okay. So do you are you do you want, do you know what I want to what I want to have or what yeah. I want to experience there's a lot of websites out there that have a header that if you click to any page you get their header and you have an opt-in with an image okay and that's what I want like for the genesis so you're on Agency Pro right now, right? Mm -hmm. So if you go to like a regular page on Agency Pro, um, yeah, you just go to like a regular page. All you see is the nav bar and then the page with the sidebar. What I want is I want a header image that goes all the way across and I'm able to put a opt-in there so I'm thinking what I need probably to do is create a um, a widget for it I don't know I'm not sure exactly what I need to do to have that happen okay. um, do you have an example website that has what you want yeah if you go to um, why don't you go to uh, uh, Gabby, G A B B Y. Um, dot TV dot com. Oh, that didn't work, did it? Okay. Um, shoot, sorry. It's okay, I can do a search. It might be it might be Gabby B dot TV. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Gabby that it's that's it right there. So okay. see how she so see how and then now click to like her about Gabby page. Mm -hmm. See how you still get a header image with an opt-in? Yeah. And so you actually want to add this particular opt-in section below the header. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's what I want to be able to do. All right. And I think, I don't know, I'm guessing it might take us more than one session to do this, but um, I'm happy to pay you for a few sessions. I want to learn how to do it, though. I like to know what's... I've used Elance a lot and they make changes and then everything gets screwed up. So I like to know what's happening in the changes, if that makes sense. Okay, sure. So, uh, do you use Sublime Text? Have you heard about Sublime Text? Say that again? Have you heard about Sublime Text? No, I haven't. Okay, so this is a free editor program that I use to edit uh, the files. Um, as you can see right now, I'm editing the Agency Pro Themes Functions PHP. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea is to, as you say, create um, or register a widget area, and uh, this will basically, you know, put a section in appearance widgets into which we drag a text widget or a opt-in form widget and fill it up. Okay. Um, 
so this particular uh, page, if mm -hmm. we inspect, you can see that um, Okay, so she is essentially using an image, mm -hmm. and uh, she has this opt-in over here. Right. So what we can do is we can uh, set this image as the background of the widget area. Mm -hmm. So let's first create the widget area. So I'm going to just copy the existing code which creates a widget area like that, and you see the ID. So this ID has to be unique for each widget area. Okay. So I'm going to call this home option. Or do you want this on all the pages or only home page or only in a page? No, yes, I want it on all the pages. All the pages. So we just call this um, option below header. Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to give the same name over here option below header. So this particular appears in when you go to appearance and widgets. Mm -hmm. Let's put a hyphen like that. And this is the description, which can be anything. So I'll just say this is the opt in section below the header, like that. So I've just saved that. Now, when I go to appearance widget, you see the new widget area? Yes. Below. I totally yeah. do. Okay, so I have one more question. Will you take me through that one more time? Like, where you create? Where did you create that? Where were in you? Function, you were function in function. Okay, so what I see on your sidebar, like your um, full, all your folders, I don't see that on. Yeah, I don't see that on my WordPress. So do I have to go into my FTP files? Yeah, if you uh, let me show you through FTP method. Are you on a PC or a Mac? I'm on a Mac. Okay, do you use Transmit? Do I use what? Transmit. You see this transmit? That's an FTP client that I use. No, I don't use that. I've never heard of it before. Okay, but essentially the concept is the same. You just log into your site and you go to public underscore HTML and you go inside WP content of your website mm -hmm. and you go inside themes and you would see Agency Pro here. Okay? So in this case, I don't have that on the site, on the live site, so I'm just going to go into 11.40 Pro. Okay. But you see functions.php? Yep. So this is the file in which we need to make this change. Can I do this? Can I do this from WordPress, or do I have to go into a, a side? A, a, you know what I mean? Like, can I do this on the WordPress backend or not? Yeah, you can do this on the WordPress backend by going to Appearance and Editor, but the problem is that if you make any mistake in the PHP, it's going to lock you out. You'll not be able to log back into the dashboard. Right, Unless, right. Yeah, at that point of time, you need to use FTP anyway. So, uh, so it just makes sense so to I've, directly use FTP so in the first place. I've got a question for you because I've done that before where I've like gone into WordPress and I've done some CSS edits or whatever, and then all of a sudden, boom, I broke my site, right? Mm -hmm. And I like I just get a white screen or whatever. So you're saying that this way of doing it, uh, like, means that I can make those changes and not have that happen. Well, even if you make a change here, and uh, even if you make a mistake, which will cause the site to crash. Yeah. Uh, you know, you you always have the file open already in the editor, so you can just go back and undo what you have done, fix it, and then just refresh. So. Uh, this program that I use, uh, this transmit, what it does is, if, for example, you see if I double click on that, it basically launches the file in this same editor. Okay. So I, what I do is I just go here, I make changes, and I hit mm -hmm. Command S to save the file. 
it, it saves the file and automatically uploads to the server. Okay. Uh, if I make any mistake, if I you know go to the front end, reload, and see something is wrong, I just edit the file back here, undo, and save it back. That's it. Okay. So I feel like I might. I feel like we might need to go back a little bit and just. Like I said, I know this. it might take a, a couple sessions, and I don't know if that's okay for you, if you have time to give me a couple sessions, but I think yeah. maybe if we go back to how you do the whole transmit thing, and you know what I mean? I, like, I, I, I know a lot, and I've learned a little bit about CSS and HTML and whatnot, but I would still say that I'm very, um, I'm, I'm, I'm very, you know, I'm an amateur. So I, I just saw, like, I totally saw what you were doing in the register sidebar and, and or register the widget and stuff, but I want to know from the beginning to the end of, I want to be able to watch and see from the beginning of the end how I do that. Does that make okay. sense? Yep, that makes sense. Do you, um, you know, we can use a program that, uh, that can uh, uh, give me control to your computer and uh, you can actually do it while I tell you, instruct you, and if you're stuck, I can just basically take the mouse to where it should be done. If you want to do that, you can do that way, or just uh, have me show you from scratch. Oh, I love that idea. Tell me a little bit more about that. How does that work? Okay, um, you know, there are these uh, screen sharing programs with which I can control your computer remotely. Okay. So, uh, uh, we can use that. Let me just, I always forget the name of the program. Hang on. Uh, it's called Team Viewer. Okay. So it's a software that you install on your computer and then it will give you uh, a unique ID and a password. Mm -hmm. um, once you have that information, you give it to me so that I can, you know, click on this button to connect to your computer remotely. Mm -hmm. And then I can see your desktop as well as control it. Okay. So then uh, I will be telling you, you know, do this, do that. Uh, this is how you set it up. In case you have any questions, I can just take the control over and do it for you. Does that still happen? Like, do we still do that on a Google Hangout? No, no, no. This is separate from Google Hangout. Okay. Uh, this has the, uh, you know, the screen sharing, remote control, voice, everything built in. Does it tape it as well then or not? No, it does not tape it. You've okay. got to use a software like Camtasia or ScreenFlow. So I just really learn as I go along with you then on it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, as I told you, there are some software like Camtasia or ScreenFlow. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have those installed, you can use them to record your screen activity. Okay. Yeah. No, I think that might, I don't know. Because I, I really I really love being able to make changes myself, so I really do want to learn them, and I don't want to go through, like, I've looked at all these courses at my community college and stuff, and they just go from the beginning, you know, and I, I, I've taught myself from the beginning, so I want to learn a little more fr faster, you know? Okay. Um, okay. So... Pardon. See, this, this software that I use is uh, Transmit. It's a paid software, so I think it costs about uh, $50 or something. I do not remember. Okay. Uh, I mean, you don't have to use this, but I just use this because it looks nice and uh, it just works for me. Yeah. So um, what would be other options for me then? I mean, I could pay for a transmit. I mean, I have no issues paying for that. If that it's fifty dollars a year or something like that. No, just a one-time fees, I think. Okay. It's, it's totally worth it. You know, I mean, if if you are building a site for yourself, just one off, then it doesn't make sense. But if you're in this business where you build sites for others and you have clients, well, uh, I do a little bit, but I. I, I do a little bit of work for other people. Like, I do some basic websites for other people. Again, like I said, I've taught myself a lot, but there are certain, like, I, I for my websites, I want to really create some more advanced things. Yeah. So, 
the stuff that I know I can create other websites for people but the stuff that I want to make happen for my own websites I really want to create um, and I don't know maybe maybe I just talk maybe I just hire you to do it too that's another option I guess but I kind of I'm one of those girls I like to know that I like to know how it happens you know what I mean yeah and so I I've hired, I've hired Elance to make a number of changes on my websites a few times and they fucked everything up. So I don't, I, I like to know what's going on within my website, you know? Yeah. I mean, sure. See, uh, if you actually want to do it yourself and have me guide you step by step, then we can use that um, Team Your software and do that. Or, you know, we'll just continue the way I'm doing it right now. You are anyway recording it, right? Yes, this is being recorded right now. So we yeah, can I mean, Yeah, you can just transmit and then try it out and if you get stuck just ping me anytime and I'll be uh, yeah, glad. Yeah, sounds great. So um so yes, so let's let's finish this out right now. So like you have um we're back at so you're in functions. Mm -hmm. And I could do that within WordPress like you had said. Yeah. Um or I could do that within, like, I'm on Bluehost, so I could go into my functions PHP in Bluehost too, right? Yes, you can use the cPanel file manager. Mm hmm. Make changes there. Okay. So I've gone into my functions in Bluehost, and this, um, let's go back. You registered the sidebar, correct? Mm -hmm. I just copied the code and pasted it, pasted it and cha changed the ID name and description. Okay, so l let's keep going for now. All right. Okay, so we're going to use a plugin. It's called uh, Genesis eNews Extended something. Mm -hmm. so go to plugins, add new. So actually, I may already have it installed. So if I will go to install, okay. So it's called Genesis in use extended. Mm -hmm. So I'll go to appearance and widgets. So for the opt-in below header widget area, I'm going to drag that Genesis eNews extended widget. and um, call this Mm-hmm. Okay. So <clears throat> uh, we have added the, uh, I mean, we have registered the widget area. We have populated that widget area, but now it is time to actually display it below the header. Mm -hmm. The way we do it is using actions. Uh, if you go to... Is that the simple hooks? Uh, you could use simple hooks, but I don't use that. I just use PHP for the same thing. Okay. Yeah. There is a website called um, genesistutorials.com slash visual hook guide. Mm -hmm. so if you go there, it shows you the list of hooks. Okay. So you can see Genesis after header is where this is the hook that I would use if I want to okay. put something after the header. Okay. So I'm going to copy that. 
Mm -hmm. And in functions.php, I'm going to add an action. And I can do this again within WordPress if I wanted to, but the whole point is it might break down if I make a mistake. Yep. So that's why you're doing it on on. Are you still are you on transit right now again? Um. Well, actually, this file, the website that I am working on right now, it's on my local host. In the sense, the server is running on my own computer. Mm -hmm. But uh, so in this particular case, I'm not using transmit at all. So okay. all these files are on my computer hard disk. So um, the Genesis after header, what is the SK display opt-in? What does okay. that mean? Um, this is the name of the function. So this function has a code which should be displayed at this hook. And this that, can be any, that's this can be the SK display opt-in, what you had just copied off from that site? No, 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 no. This is the one I copied off the site. The Genesis after header, right. Okay. So what is the SK display opt-in then? This is the name of the function. It can be anything of your choice. Okay. So you had titled it opt-in below header. So why, do, why does it say SK display opt-in? See, this is just the name of the function. It can be anything. It is not necessarily the ID of the widget area. So I'm going to actually I'm going to define the function like this here. Okay. So if I do that, go here and reload. Mm-hmm. Genesis after header. Okay, why is it not appearing? One minute. Something didn't work. Uh, You're looking into the details of what it didn't work. Is it, uh, sorry? Okay, so the reason why it was not appearing is because. Mm -hmm. Tell me. You know, it is actually behind this header. In this particular theme, Agency Pro, as you yes. can see here, the, the site header is fixed. Yes. So it's, it's going below this or behind this. So what we got to do is. Um, you know, I'm going to put this in a div called my opt-in. So it, so it actually drops below that information? Well, it wouldn't drop that. We got to basically add the CSS and give it a top padding or top margin the equal to the height of that header to mm -hmm. be able to see this. Yep. So the height of the header is 61 pixels. Mm -hmm. Oh, actually, 88 pixels. Sorry. So I'm going to give a top margin of 88 pixels. And then I reload. So now we can see hello here. So let me just walk you through what I did now. So Genesis after header is the name of the hook or the location. Yep. And SK display option is the name of the function. So this can be anything. Just to ensure that there are no hyphens, there are no spaces. You just got to use underscores and all small letters. Yeah. So in that function, I'm, <clears throat> I'm using the echo statement to basically you know, print hello on the web page. After this, at this hook. <clears throat> Does it make sense? Any doubts? 
What's up? Did you understand this? Any doubts? A little bit. Yeah, like I, I get it. So go back to the go back to what it looks like on the site. Yeah. So you just did that little hello, right? Yep. So if I had done I'd I'd love I'd love for you to take me through like making it a full image and putting an opt in in there. Yeah, yeah, that's the next step. We're just okay, doing step. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. So I'm going to delete this entire echo thing. So okay. why are you deleting that? Oh, just cuz we're going to change it up. Yeah, yeah, because we want to actually display the opt in area, the, not the hello, right? That was just right, the text. Right. Right. Okay. Okay, now we got to use the code which will basically display the widget area. Yes. And I just pasted it here. Okay. And where did you paste it? Where did you paste that from? Oh, um, this editor that I'm using, Sublime Text 2, it has uh, uh, snippets. Okay. So I created a snippet and when I press Command Shift P, you now it brings up this menu here. Yep. So I just start typing display widget area. You see, this is the snippet that I have created. Okay. So when I select that, it basically pastes the content of that snippet like that. Okay. Uh, I, I can just give it to. <clears throat> okay, so Genesis widget area is a function which is built into Genesis that will display the contents of a widget area. Okay? Yep. And uh, this home feature that you see here is the ID of the widget area that should be displayed. Okay. The ID that we have used is that particular one. So I'm going to copy that and put it there. Got okay? it. And you see before and after. So this before, this is the HTML that should be appearing. Uh, this is like the you know the opening wrap of the widget area, and the one is the closing wrap. Okay. So uh, for the class, I'm just going to use the same thing as the uh, ID. So you know we can easily make out what it is. So opt-in below header. This is one of the two classes of the div that surrounds or contains the widget area. And since it's a widget area, I'm going to uh, say widget area as one of the other classes. <laughs> so I save this. I go back to my web page and I do a reload. So we have the opt-in form appearing here, like this. Okay. So I'll tell you the importance of this wrap. You see div class is equal to wrap. If, if that was not there, if it was just like that, and I do a reload, see it's, it's going to span from the left edge to the right edge of the browser. Yep. But since I want the contents of that widget area to be contained within the, the, you know, the wrap, the wrap is just what goes from here to here, the actual content area. Good. Right. I got a, <clears throat> excuse me, I got to put this div class is equal to wrap so that it just contains that within the, whatever is the wrap defined in the theme, like this. Okay. So, so if we... In is that when, yeah. is that mobile responsive is my question. It need not be mobile responsive at this time, but that is something that we got to add CSS for uh, okay. once we are done set up with this uh, at the desktop width. Okay, so if we inspect this HTML, so the header is here, okay? Yep. And this is the 
div, the HTML that we have injected using the action. Okay. And within that div, there is one more div that has a class of wrap. So this is basically showing the widgets, all the widgets that are there in that widget area. Okay. So can we put an image behind that then? <clears throat> yep, let's do that. Okay. So I'm gonna uh, go into my website. <clears throat> okay. So I place that image in the images folder. Okay, did you see this? I've basically pasted the image in the image folder. Yep, yep that's uh, yeah. I got that. Like I know how to do that, right? So you like you're just copying the image, right? Yep. So uh, for this. Uh, so we can set that image as a background for this particular wrap. Okay. So I'm going to go into my CSS and put the name of the uh, div, you know, this particular div here. If this is the class, right? Yeah. Inside, we have a wrap. So for that, I'm going to set the background as images and the name of that. I do not want it to repeat, so I'm going to set no repeat. Okay. So I'm saving that. I come back here and reload. Okay. So I would like this image to be you know, as a, at the right side, not uh, at the left. So I'm going to say right up, click, back and reload. So now the image is at the right. Yep. And I'm going to set this, you see the light gray background, which is part of the image. I am going to set that as the background for the entire uh, do so it looks like you know it's full width. Yes, yes. So I'm gonna copy that and set the background as that color. So I just pick the color of that and pasting that in. Save it. Come back here and reload. Okay. Now let's add some padding so that you know it doesn't look too close like this. So if we go to we can add a padding at the top of say 50 pixels and padding at the bottom of say 50 pixels. Save it. Come here and reload. Um. Yeah, yeah, it's looking good. But um, we know, we need you see this gap. It shouldn't be like that. So right. what we can do is, um, how about adding the top padding and the bottom padding to the, the the actual div, not the wrap inside that. Come back here and reload. Oops, what happened? Let's see. Okay, so it is okay. It's correct, uh, except that I think we need to adjust the width of the these. Right. Yeah. yeah. 
So let's go and do that first. We can come to the background later. And you could probably adjust those to be mobile responsive, right, if you make them small enough? <coughs> or not? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, see, you don't need to bother about mobile responsive at this time because once you're done setting up for the desktop, uh, it, it's just a matter of writing additional CSS to ensure that it looks good on the mobiles. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm going to inspect this with Firebug and uh, okay. So this particular uh, widget has a class of enews widget. So to uniquely target this particular thing, I can say, you know, look at the div that has this class opt-in below header and within that enews widget, and I can set the width of that. Right. So you set that up on a whole different line, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. So here I'm going to say max width. I don't know. I'll just put 500 and see how it looks. Yeah. Already. Okay. So maybe 600 perhaps. Okay. So let's keep it at 600 for the purpose of this uh, tutorial, like this. Yep. Okay. So now I want this. Uh, let's see how this. Uh, yeah, this should be actually touching this. Let's try to get rid of this gap here. Okay, so the problem is with the padding. If I remove the bottom padding and reload this, let's see what happens. Okay, so the image is good. It's just that we need to ensure that this is not touching the bottom of the section. Yeah. So what we could do is we can add a bottom margin for this entire section, so it doesn't be, it won't be touching like that. So I can say margin at the bottom of uh, the load. Yes. Nice. So, and, then, and then we yeah. can like the sign up like the sign up for our latest news. This is the text that appears before the form. That is all customizable as well then. Yeah, because that's coming from the widget. So, yeah, so go into widget and show me how that happens then. This is the title. Yep. This is the text that appears before the form. We can change it here. Yeah, but how do, you, how do you change the way that it looks, right? Uh, you mean the styling CSS? Yes. OK. So let's say you want it to look like this, OK? Yeah. Uh, so we just need to inspect the element using Firebug. And you can see here it's a H4 that has a class of widget title. So to uniquely target this particular element, we can say, you know, look at any H4 that is inside opt-in below header. So the way you do it is, just copy that, H4, widget title. So here we would set font family, font size, and stuff like that. Let's say I put it, make it 30 pixels. So I reload that, and just we just yeah. change the font size. Yeah. Now let me check what this lady is using. Okay, the font family is Nexa heavy. Uh, let's see if it is available in Google Fonts.
Mm-hmm. Okay. That's okay. Um, try like Avril Sands. Hmm. It's a it's a commercial font. Okay, sorry. Tell me which font. Try Avril Sands. A V I R L S A N S. What's the spelling again? A V I R L S A N S. Um, S A N S. Uh, try. Who cares? I like. I just want to learn how to do this, so it doesn't matter so much. Try blackjack. B L A C K J A C K. Something came up. Okay, here this one. Uh, no blackjack. Is it a Google font? Yeah, it should be J A C K. Add J A C K to that. Mm, I don't no, see. there's not. Okay. Uh, I don't care. Just pick something. It doesn't matter. Okay. So I'll just go go back to Google Fonts and it shows the most popular ones. We'll pick yeah. one of that. Yeah, go off that. That's fine. I just I want to learn how to do it, so it doesn't matter. I can pick from there. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Let's use this one. Railway. Yeah, it's great. Okay, I'm gonna click on that button which says quick use. Mm-hmm. And it shows the code here. Yeah. So I'm gonna go back to my functions.php. Mm-hmm. And uh, usually most themes come with the Google font. Yeah, you see here? Where? This oh no, I didn't see where. Here. Oh, that's part. That's part of the child theme is Google Fonts. Mm -hmm. I mean, not all themes have it, but this Agency Pro has it. And in okay. fact, even in this example, yep. it has cool. WP NQ style Google Fonts. Great. Okay. So uh, you see. So now you just have to upload, or you just have to paste that font in. Yeah. I mean, you just have to use uh, these uh, fonts separated by the pipe character. Mm hmm. And uh, put in this railway like so, and that's it. Save it. So now it's that font is available for loading. Okay. So I'm gonna go back to style CSS and put in this line: font family railway sans serif. Mm -hmm. Nice. So we change. We just change the font for that. Yeah. Okay, so let's uh, you know change this particular text so it doesn't look so dull. So you can see this is the paragraph which is inside uh, this particular widget. So we can essentially target it the same way. Okay, so let's make it uppercase, text transform uppercase. And let's increase the font size to maybe 20 pixels and see how it looks. Okay, nice. Yeah, if you want to change the font family, you can do the same way. Okay, so I'm going to stop you here mm -hmm. um, because I just, you just, are like clearly like you're on top of this like you know how to do this so basically um, if I'm looking at a few different Genesis themes and I want to mm -hmm. have something like what you what we've just created together right that is also yeah. mobile responsive so if it's like what happens now if this gets small does it's it's responsive right like the the first name, the email, the go, that gets smaller, right? No, I do not know. I don't know. <laughs> Let's see that. Okay. We haven't come to that stage. So assuming that we are done with the desktop styling. Yeah. Uh, if you are using Firefox, uh, you go to Tools, and you go to Web Developer, okay? Mm hmm And you see Responsive Design View. So. The desktop shortcut for that is Alt Command M. Alt Command M. So you just press that, 
alt command m and that brings up you know this interface where you can change the widths of this particular window mm -hmm. so here i i'm not sure whether this is uh, a pre built preset or which something i have added but you can always add stuff here so i select 1024 yeah. so right now we are looking at 1024 width so this is the ipad uh, landscape width okay and it looks good yeah and now go to the iphone then no, no, let's go to 768 see this is the ipad portrait that, that still looks good because even though it's covering the image you can still get the first name email and go on it right yeah but if uh, this were a real site what i would do is i would add some padding so it doesn't touch the left edge and okay. i would reduce the width furthermore so you know this is not covering up her face or nose okay so if you want so, i can show you so here's my question for you. If I if I give you a couple websites that I want you to create this for me, like create these um, these these header frames, because now hold on, like let's go to the the category, like go to a page. Is that still showing on the page then? We are on a page. This is the about page. Right. So if we go to any page. Is that okay. going to always show us as the header? That's what I want. Is that always going to show us the header? It is site wide. It appears on yes, all the pages. Yes, yes. Yeah, exactly. So if I give you a couple websites that I want you to design this for me, I give you the images and I want something similar to this. Um, here, I think here's the thing. This is I do want to know how to do stuff myself, but I've also I've gotten burned quite a few times on Elance um, mm -hmm. with people trying to set up stuff for me, and it hasn't worked out. And I can clearly see that you are able to totally do what I want done. So what I'm wondering is if I give you a couple websites, I give you the images, and I give you the fonts. Can you do some headers for me on those websites? Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's what I do. Awesome. So I think at this point, like I am super pleased with this, and I don't, I don't need to know how to do this myself. I just want to know. Um, I guess I just wanted to really see how you did it and know that you were going to do what I wanted you to do. Um, mm -hmm. So. I would say, like, let me pay you for the session, and then I would love to connect with you and give you some um, some formulations on my other websites and have you set those up for me. How does that sound? Yeah, that sounds great. Awesome. Cool. Well, that's good. So, um, how do you bill? Oh, uh, if you go to my website. Uh, SridharKatakam.com. Uh, have you been to this site before? Well, yeah, I went to your site. That's how I contacted you. So I'm wondering how how I can pay you, because yeah, I, yeah. I contacted you through your website. So I'm wondering how I can pay you. Do you send me a PayPal invoice or? Actually, no. If you scroll down in the sidebar, you see a donate button. Yeah. Just click on that and enter the amount, and it come it will come to me. So you just want me to donate for this session? Yeah. Okay. And then, um, so I'll donate $75 for the session, but then how about like future future stuff that... Yeah, it's the same way. In the, future also, in the future also, you just give me the work, tell me this is what you do, I do it. Once it is done, then you just come back to the site and click on the donate button and pay. continue to pay the same way. Okay, keep it really easy, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. You don't invoice or anything. Just like go to the donate button. You just trust people to donate. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, so I will be in touch with you because I've got um, a couple different websites. Um, I also have a site on a Genesis site that's Beautiful Pro. I'm guessing you can do the same thing on Beautiful Pro too. Yep. Okay. Because basically, this has been my big issue with Genesis, is that they have great templates, and I can create great websites, but they don't offer like a header like that where you can create an opt-in. Mm -hmm. Like They don't have that, and they don't have a plug-in for it or anything like that. 
Right. And um, frankly, a lot of what you showed me tonight was way over my head. So I would love to just have you do it for me. Good. So I will be in contact. I, I'm going to donate for our session right now. Is $75 okay? Yes. Okay, and then um, I will be in contact with you to work on my other websites. Sure. Thank you so much. And, uh, if you go to my website, sridharkatkan.com, and do a search for horizontal opt-in, uh, yeah. you, can, you can see some examples of the opt-in forms uh, that I've incorporated into Genesis. Okay. I've just given the link in the chat in the sidebar. Okay. Yeah, so you can see some examples of what can be done with respect to opt-in forms where you have like a full width background image. Yeah, and you already showed me some great stuff and frankly like I know that you can do it now. I kind of just want you to do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So I will uh, donate and I will be in touch with you soon about setting up some new stuff for me. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this. Uh, one last question uh, request is, can you please share this video with me? I'm sorry, what's that? Can you share the recording of this uh, video with me so I can, you know... Uh, yeah, absolutely, I sure can. I will. I'll give you a link to it. Okay, sounds good. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks. Bye.